Hello everyone to the second side devlog. In this video I'll be going over the latest hiring application we put out and some news about development regarding the infected and more. First let's talk about the hiring app. We're looking for a new programmer to join the team. Our previous programmer Fusion is working on his own project, Reinfected, which I made a video on if you want to go check it out. Information about the programmer position like what we require in payment are up on the dev form post. If you're interested I linked it in the description. If you think you're up for the job, please read it over and contact me. I'm really looking forward to reading these applications, and hopefully we'll find the person. With Reason to Die, we were limited with how graphic our creations could be, and with Blam, this restriction is less limiting. That's why we're not really holding Mac with these infected creations. If you remember in the 1.5 devlog, I showcased the Slasher, Juggernaut, and the Common Infected, and they all looked pretty basic. Because of this, we went back and upgraded their appearances to give them more character. The goal of the appearances are to actually reflect their powers and danger level. The Slasher's new appearance follows this philosophy. It's bloodied and its face clawed off, organs and even spine exposed. It detail heavily and put in the updated design. What I really like about this new model is that its jaw and organs can actually be animated when rigged together. In the gameplays, the Slasher is a butcher type infected, being able to deal high amounts of damage if not taken care of. Its moveset is just basically slashing everything with its exposed bones. What is concrete in its abilities though is that it will inflict bleed on survivors, causing them to drip blood wherever they go and deal minor damage over time. I want to include multiple weak points for the affected, so there are more ways to engage the enemy with more than just aiming at their head. In Slasher's case, its chest, back, and head are all weak points. These may change in the future though, of course, if it becomes too easy to kill. With the death form post, we have a new image of what the common infected will look like. Of course, faces are still randomly generated, and they take appearance of you when you're in control, or of friends when they're AIs. Working on Reason to Die showed me how boring it was to play as a normal zombie, and resetting to get a special. I don't want that problem to repeat in Blam. Currently the plan with commons is that the spawn chance will over time decrease to zero, then only spawn as specials for the rest of the match. Again, this may change depending on if we implement a upgrade system of some sort for the infected. If we do, then the common effect will have a lot going for them like a horde guiding ability, resurrecting again, and more. Or we may simply drop common infected being a natural spawn altogether in favor of always playing as a special, so being infected can be more fun. AI and player common infected have a low chance of turning into an uncommon infected, like in Left 4 Dead 2 where they have minor special abilities. There's a couple planned, but no official appearances for them yet, but when we do though, I may include it in the following devlog. The new infected we're revealing in this devlog is called the Alton. It's a support type that acts like a sheepdog, keeping survivors in line for others to take care of them. It comes with a ride shield and a semi-auto SR3. The concept art shows the skin wrapping around these weapons like vines, but this may change to be the skin melting onto them, possibly from radiation. We can't wait to turn this concept art into reality. When its appearance and moveset is complete, we'll include it in the following devlog. What do you think its moveset will be? Let me know in the comments. Lastly, the test map we'll be using for Project Blame is revealed in the dev form post. It's called Prototype Center. Maybe we'll turn this into official map when the testing phase is over. It's already pretty fun to play on, so who knows? Maybe it can be a sort of Nuketown themed in its complete state. The themes and the building styles of the maps can be whatever, but we're preferring that the main game had the maps grounded in the lore that we created. There's already a handful of maps created and dozens of map suggestions we've gotten from within Psy and the community, which we may visit in the future. Once we have map settings, spawning locations for everything, and guidelines on how to design the maps, we'll release a starter pack of some sort so people can submit their own if they want. This will be later down the line though, because I want to think of a green light system for determining if the maps can be approved for the main game or not. Anyways, that's all for now. Make sure you check out the dev form post if you think it would be a great addition to the team and make our project stand out. I'd love to hear your suggestions for the game in the comments or on my Discord. Link to it in the description. And as always, thanks for watching.